Welcome everybody. Let's talk about November 58 Kilo Juliet. This is an accident that happened in a PC-12NG on November 30th, 2019 in Chamberlain, South Dakota. And I have the uh, Aviation Safety Network page pulled up here. Now the aircraft had 1,725 hours on it. It was a 2013. And the flight was bound from uh, 9 Victor 9, that's uh, Chamberlain, South Dakota, to IDA, which is Idaho Falls. And uh, no pre-impact anomalies were noted by the NTSB when they uh, assessed the wreckage. And the airplane was flown by a private pilot with 2,300 plus hours, so a good bit of experience. There were 12 occupants on board, unfortunately nine fatalities and three severe injuries. The aircraft was destroyed, it crashed into a cornfield and uh, luckily no injuries on the ground. So uh, let's look at the accident and see if we can uh, learn some lessons from this. So I have Catherine's report pulled up here and uh, can show you some images of the accident airplane here. This is the day of departure, 11 o'clock in the morning. You can see the pilot there removing snow and ice from the airplane. So the airplane actually flew in the day before. It sat outdoors overnight on the ramp in snow and ice and accumulated snow and ice all over the airplane. You can see that there in that photo. The pilot did remove snow and ice from the wings but could not reach the tail. So the tail did remain ice contaminated for the takeoff. And uh, we'll just scroll through some of these pictures here so you can see some of the ice accumulation on the tail up here. So quite a snowy and icy mess. And the weather for the takeoff was low IMC and snow. So ground icing conditions were present. Smaller airports like 9V9 do not have any, uh, usually do not have any icing, uh, de-icing services. So uh, and if ground icing conditions are present, it's usually best not to fly or to at least put the airplane in a heated hangar. Um, although that won't protect you from active snow or ice that's falling uh, once you pull the airplane out and uh, start it up and taxi out to the runway. So. Initially, when this accident occurred in 2019, the initial thought was that the aircraft was iced up, took off, and stalled as a result of the ice accumulation. However, the NTSB, through their analyses, determined that the issue wasn't so much the icing, but uh, just improper loading of the aircraft and some poor flying technique. So let's look at some of those details here. So the airplane only has 10 approved seats. There are two in the cockpit and eight in the back <clears throat> under the executive seating configuration, which is the most common seating uh, configuration you find in the PC-12. But there were 13 occupants on board the airplane, none of which qualified as a lap child. So uh, too many occupants and the airplane was loaded over the maximum takeoff weight and the CG was also aft of the aft CG limit. So right out of the gate here, regardless of the snow and ice, we've got some pretty serious problems with the loading of the airplane. And uh, again, the NTSB does believe now that that was the primary cause of the accident. So a note on the PC-12, uh, the stabilizer trim is the pitch trim in the airplane. That has to be set to the diamond setting when the CG is aft of 236 inches. And in this accident, with the CG being aft of the aft limit, it most definitely was aft of 236 inches. I couldn't find in the report materials whether or not the pilot used that diamond setting, and I'll show you what I'm referring to here. There's actually a picture of it on this blog, if I scroll way down here, on the triple trim indicator down here. So this diamond setting here for the stab trim is what we would use for a tail-heavy scenario like they had on this day. I'm not sure if the pilot had the trim set on that diamond or not. Uh, my guess, and it's just a guess, is that he probably did not. So with an aft CG, the tail will be heavy, so you need a little bit more nose down trim, which he may not have had in, so that would also be an aggravating factor here. So the NTSB did determine that all of the ice control systems were on during the takeoff, and the PC-12 has all of the flight into known icing certification requirements. It has pneumatic de-icing boots, windshield heat, probe and vane heat. Uh, it has a nice inspection light, prop heat, and inertial separator. So it has everything it needs to fly into icing conditions. I've flown the PC-12 in quite a bit of ice over the years. I've never had a problem. It does quite well in icing. And uh, luckily the pilot did have those systems on. But one thing to note about that is when the inertial separator is open and the prop heat is on, those two conditions 
put the stick pusher into ice mode. So no doubt the, the pusher was in ice mode for this accident, and that's significant because when the pusher is in ice mode, activation of the shaker and pusher system is reduced by 8 degrees angle of attack. So the shaker pusher system will activate much sooner at a much higher airspeed than it would in normal mode. Uh, so I assume that that's probably part of what led to the loss of control here. When that shaker system begins to shake the yoke, it's quite startling. It's designed to get your attention. It's like hitting rumble strips on the highway in your car. It wakes you right up. And then, of course, if the stick pusher <clears throat> um, starts to actually engage and push the yoke forward, that can be extremely startling and disorienting if you're already... Uh, if you already have your hands full on a departure like this. So I'm guessing that these uh, these things contributed to the loss of control. So just some other factors here. The airplane was overweight, tail heavy, <clears throat> had ice on the horizontal stabilizer and elevator. Now, again, on that point, the NTSB doesn't feel like that played a major role, although it didn't help. Certainly you have more weight on the tail. And also, there is an aerodynamic penalty of some kind, whether it's a, a small penalty or a big one. It's still uh, not something that you that you want to have on the airplane for takeoff. And was operating with the pusher in ice mode, which uh, would have required a lower angle of attack and higher airspeed as the flight launched into low IMC conditions. So you can see the accident chain theory here, the Swiss cheese model that we talk about in aviation, where normally serious accidents like this are a result of links in the chain. There are several factors that come together to cause an accident. It's not normally just one uh, mistake that's made. And in this case, certainly you had a lot of precipitating factors that led to this accident. Also, from the, uh, the data recorder, we were able, or we, the NTSB, <laughs> was able to uh, uh, determine that the pilot rotated early and abruptly and climbed steeply. So those are all of the wrong things to do in this scenario when uh, you need a higher airspeed for rotation and a lower angle of attack for climb so as to not activate the shaker pusher system or even worse, stall. The shaker pusher system did activate intermittently throughout the short flight. Uh, the airplane only made it to I think about 380 feet above the ground and then uh, stalled, entered a steep descending turn and impacted a cornfield. So the accident uh, happened immediately after takeoff. Uh, the aircraft wasn't even to flaps retraction altitude yet. So um, a steep bank was recorded and that was likely the result of wing drop following a stall. So if you don't know anything about the PC-12 stall characteristics, it's pretty interesting. I would suggest a, a Google search and there's some pretty interesting, there's some good material out there that explains the the reasons that the PC-12 has very uncharacter or unfavorable uh, stall characteristics, and part of the reason for that is because the wing is designed to fly very slowly, and when the when you have a low airspeed, your ailerons are less effective. But yet it has a very powerful engine, so 1,200 shaft horsepower and takeoff power. So when you have a high power setting and low airspeed, uh, and also with the flaps extended like you had in this accident, if you stall, you will roll, and you'll roll all the way over. And there's really nothing that you can do to prevent that. And the aircraft can lose 500 to 700 feet, even under the, you know, the, the ideal response. So I'm guessing that that steep wing drop uh, was the result of the stall. So my guess is that the pilot wasn't necessarily spatially disoriented. You can see the flight path here. Um, it, I think spatial D may have played a small role. You know, anytime that you're transitioning onto the gauges immediately after lift off, lift off in a low IMC like that. Uh, you do really have to concentrate uh, so that you, you make that transition onto the gauges uh, successfully, but it, it seems like the pilot had the airplane more or less under control but was making some abrupt pitch inputs and then stalled and lost control from there. So again, factors contributing to loss of control increased stall speed due to uh, overloading so the more weight you put in the airplane the higher the stall speed is also reduced uh, reduced pitch stability due to the aft cg when the cg is aft the longitudinal stability is decreased so these are all factors that would lead to a higher likelihood of a stall the aircraft is also tail heavy with that aft cg which would cause pitch up tendencies possibly an improper stab trim setting for takeoff 
So rolling some more nose down trim prior to takeoff would have helped reduce that nose up tendency with the FCG. Icing on the tail, which didn't help matters. And also just poor flying technique. So a premature rotation uh, prior to the correct rotation speed, also an abrupt rotation, and then a steep climb at a steep angle of attack. Uh, and in these conditions, you're asking for a stall. And then also improper response to shaker pusher activation. And of course, the low IMC and lack of visual references made this all very difficult. So with the shaker and the pusher activating intermittently, that would be distracting, disorienting. If you're uh, fighting against the pusher, uh, it takes, I think it takes 85 to 90 pounds of aft force on the stick or on the control wheel to uh, overpower it. There is a clutch in there so you can overpower it, but it, you really have to pull hard. So that would be uh, very difficult to control the airplane under those circumstances. So pilot lost control, stalled, and then crashed. So lessons to learn here. Uh, first and foremost in this accident is to you know just be mindful of the aircraft loading. Um, we only want to put the uh, uh, approved number of occupants in the airplane. Everybody needs to have a seat with the seat restraint. Uh, and then also, of course, to keep the, the weight in the CG within the approved limits. Also have a thorough understanding of your aircraft systems. So knowing the appropriate rotation speed in this, in this case would have been helpful. And also just reducing the AOA and the climb, giving yourself a little bit of added protection above the stall in these conditions could have prevented the accident. Um, also, uh, using the clean aircraft concept. So, just don't take off with ice on the airframe. And uh, sometimes when you're operating in the wintertime in the Midwest, uh, like this, uh, this flight was, at these smaller airports, you don't have any de-icing services available. The best thing to do is just postpone the flight and wait for, for better weather. So, very unfortunate accident. Um, my heart goes out to them and uh, hopefully we can learn some lessons and prevent these things from happening in the future. So thanks for watching guys. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the PC-12 systems, uh, I am hosting a, a PC-12 systems boot camp right now. In fact, uh, we're coming up in the last week this Sunday. Uh, but if you uh, join the channel as a member, you'll have access to all of the recordings in the members area. And uh, you can also attend uh, the, uh, the boot camp live this coming Sunday and I have more courses to come. Thanks for watching.